Are you interested in Factorio but not quite ready to dive into the Space Age expansion? Whether you've never played Factorio before or are just looking for a refresher course with the changes made in 2.0, I hope this series will help. Most episodes will be 10 minutes or shorter. To aid in quickly locating specifics, topics will be broken down into chapters and listed on the screen at the start of each episode. Diving right into the free play. Default settings and a balanced map seed. The only active mod is Afraid of the Dark, and that's solely for the purpose of visibility at night for you as the viewers. The engineer realizes that his starship definitely isn't going anywhere, and this description is nicely brief and accurate. Press Escape to bring up the menu, then Settings and Controls get you into the keybinds. Very useful to know if you ever get into trouble and don't know how to do something. By the minimap in the upper right, tips and tricks will have useful information and tutorials added to it as you progress. Mouse wheel zooms in and out, WASD for movement. Brackets appear over objects that you can interact with, but if they turn red, that means you're out of range. Hold right mouse to attempt to mine an object, left click to open it. Character inventory is on the left, container on the right, and you can left click and drag items between them. Shift click moves one stack of items, control click moves all stacks of that particular item, and control clicking on an empty spot moves all of the inventory. To close a pop-up window, either click on the X or press the escape or E keys. It's not necessary to open a container to loot it, simply highlight it, control left click. Out comes the iron and one of the improvements over the 1.x version of Factorio is now you get the little icon of what the item is and not just the word text. That's everything useful that survived the crash. You can remove the debris if you want, but now what do we do? When in doubt, visit the research screen by pressing T or clicking in the upper right corner of the screen. Layout is still the same. Flowchart view on the right. List of text on the left. You can select text from either place. And then details of the currently selected text in the upper left. Text in red are not available because you don't have the prerequisites yet. Only the ones in yellow and we've just got electronics and steam power to begin with. A handful of texts, including these first two, are unlocked in a different way. You just need to craft a specific number of some item. I like this change because it reduces analysis paralysis at the start of the game. Fewer texts than before to pick from right away and also fewer items to sort through and figure out what they do. Before we can consider any other research, we need 10 copper plates for electronics, 50 iron plates for steam power, and a lab for the automation science pack. To check out what we have to work with, we need to access the character screen, E key again, or clicking on the portrait in the personal equipment area in the lower left. A burner mining drill, stone furnace, wood, and some iron plates. For more detail, alt clicking on any item opens a new feature in version 2.0, the Factoriopedia. This lists every item in the game, even the ones you haven't unlocked yet. On the right is a breakdown of the current item stats and capabilities. The two immediately available fuel types are wood with a fuel value of 2 megajoules and coal generally superior with 4 megajoules. Scrolling down, we see that the burner mining drill can extract stone, iron, copper, and coal. Checking in on the iron ore, one thing we can make out of it is the iron plates that we need for our steam power. The made-in section here includes the stone furnace, let's check out what that does. Like the mining drill, the furnace requires fuel, and it can produce not only iron plates, but copper ones, as well as other items. There's back and forward buttons to navigate to topics you've looked at before, and the search function can filter the items you're shown on the left side and narrow that down. Click dragging our items down to the quick bar at the bottom of the screen is useful. This simply gives us a more convenient way to access them without having to open the character screen each time. To free up a slot, click the middle mouse button. Relocating an item to a different spot on the quick bar is as simple as clicking it, moving to the new spot, click there. To find the resources we need, use tab or M to access the remote view. Our engineer is represented by the little manila circle and the splotches of checkerboard pattern are various resources we can mine. Iron is by far the top early game priority, so we'll amble off in that direction to get started. To place a machine, simply select it, left click on the ground where you want it to go. Factorio tells you if something's wrong, in this case, miners must be built on a resource patch. Building on top of another object doesn't work either. Green indicates a valid location. Shift clicking places a bluish ghost structure useful for planning out larger builds. Yellow is out of range. The R key rotates by 90 degrees to face a machine in the desired direction. Object details are displayed on the right, or we can click in. Either way, the drill needs fuel. Our starting wood is one option, so is this huge rock nearby. 
The big rock only provides stone. Note the expected resources. That's an estimate, and the actual yield will vary. Newly acquired resources on the quick bar for tracking and convenience. One good way to get a small amount into the drill is simply press Z a few times and drop them in. When you're done with an item, press Q to clear the cursor. Mining away, but then it stops. Target full. The F key picks up any items nearby, but you need to be very close. Number keys select the quick bar item in that position. In this case, two, second slot is the furnace. Now the iron goes directly into the furnace, which needs fuel, and also has a result slot for the output. Control right click puts half a stack into the machine. Control left click would put it all in, and now we're supplied and running. While we're waiting for this to produce a bit, let's just mine some more rocks. Again, we're holding right click to do that. In a pinch, you can chop down trees instead of coal or manually mine stone and coal. But if we've got these rocks around, let's use them. Trees do go down quickly. We will need a bit of wood eventually, and there's no machine that can mine them. If you're finding this useful so far, please like, subscribe, and consider leaving a comment below with your thoughts. I would much appreciate it. Control clicking also gets the product from a machine. Crafting's the right side of the character window. Left click for one item, shift click for the most that you can make, and right click for five. Same controls apply to canceling crafts in the queue at the bottom of the screen. Now that we have a few more machines, it's time to expand. Another method of selection is pressing the Q key to copy a building that's already in place. It's popular and effective to distribute coal by holding Z and moving the mouse rapidly over a cluster of buildings. Before our supply runs too low, let's add some mining drills on the coal patch. Arranging the drills so that the yellow output arrows face each other means each one can supply the other and we don't need to add more coal to them after the initial startup. Then it's time to go on a bit of a hike north to the copper patch. Not as important as iron to be sure, but we don't want to forget about it completely. As we turn out the iron plates, notice the progress bar on the steam power in the upper right of the screen is gradually advancing. One grill and furnace combo in copper is enough for now. We'll throw a few coal in each and grab some wood on our way back down. That should be plenty. We won't need a lot of wood and trees serve a very important purpose in absorbing pollution. More drills needed to scale up iron production and our first research is coming in. Control right click on each coal drill a few times, taking half of the storage each round, but be sure not to be too greedy or you'll take all their fuel. I want to reach eight burner mining drills for iron eventually, which is two more than I recommended on Factoria 1.x, but we are going to need a little bit more iron with the way the tech tree is set up now. There's electronics, so we've made enough metal plates to at least satisfy the tech necessities. Seems wise to boost our coal mining to keep up, so we'll add two more drills there and make the ever popular square. Same principle applies as before, we just want each drill to be feeding into the one ahead of it in a continuous loop. And back to boosting iron production. The start can definitely be grindy, but we just want to balance out the various resources, producing about what we need. Some people like to build many more burner mining drills at the start, but I just think that's a waste of time. The point is only to build enough to support the next phase of the factory, at which point these burner drills will be obsolete. There's our eight drills for the iron, but we're definitely running low on coal. A quick resupply of that, then it's prudent to also add a second copper drill, and we're going to be good to go. 